Hi guys, welcome to the EFL Grand Finals. It's both teams on the class. I'm Robin, I'm from NUS, and I'm chairing and maybe dissenting from this debate. With, with me are Lok, Nadine, Joan, Emiko, Rebecca, and John Kuo. Please give your panel a round of applause. On site government today, we have Unpa One. With Prime Minister Ravi Nathaniel, Deputy Prime Minister Ignatius Ivan, and, and with Josephine Chitra. Ravi will also be doing the reply. Inside opposition, we have ITB1. With Leader of Opposition, Arif. Deputy Leader of Opposition, Elvis. Eh? Elvis. And the whip being Vicario, with Elvis also doing the reply. I would like to remind the audience to be success, to be respectful while still being rambunctious and please keep all handphones, pages and other assorted bullshit that could disrupt the debate to a minimum. Okay, without, so with that, I call upon the Prime Minister to begin the debate. Here, here. Mr. Madam Speaker, we're very proud of the Indonesian final today, but we on proposition would like to say that welfare services on uh, every democratic country is not necessarily helping poor people, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, what kind of health, uh, welfare services are we talking about? We're talking about health welfare services such as giving you know, food coupons for the poor or discount in healthcare services yes, for the poor, in which we think that these kind of services cannot meet the urgent and emerging circumstances of the need of the poor people. And that's the reason why we think that the need of poor people cannot be generalized in a way the government thinks. Because more importantly, the way government generalizes all of these needs creates a sense for these poor people. The government provides them with safety net and this safety net makes them reckless in spending their salary as well. So we on proposition would like to propose a mechanism as follows. First of all, we basically want the government to take away all the facilities that are used to be given specifically yeah. for the poor and this equivalent number of money is going to be given monthly to the poor people. Second, we are also going to provide these people with a form of government consultation in you know, helping these people to prioritize their needs. We are also going to ensure you that actually the budget is already there. It's just basically the debate on whether the allocation of this budget should be given directly to the people, ladies and gentlemen. This proposal is going to go along with all other ways of government's effort in alleviating poverty. Yeah. For example, government tries to promote the idea of entrepreneurship or you know any other form of investment, and we think this proposal supports that. I'm going to explain two things as Prime Minister. I'm going to explain first that the proposal is better, the proposal better meets the need of the poor people and in doing so we help poverty alleviation. Second, I'm going to explain how the policy is a better and more appropriate use of taxpayers' money. So before I continue, well. yes. But food gives you power to a uh, power to think. Education make you make you easy to access the, the work and help make you productive. Why do you think this is not the basic right that already exists under the status quo? Because it's a basic right, people will always spend their money will also spend their money in doing those ladies and gentlemen. So we're not saying that just because we apply this policy suddenly people won't buy food or we, people you know won't drink water, ladies and gentlemen. This is not relevant to this debate. So basically going to the first point, we say ladies and gentlemen that the exclusive benefit of giving cash for these people is its liquidity, ladies and gentlemen. Because when you have a liquid money that you can use all the time. You, you can cope with unpredictable change that you're going to meet in your daily life. But the problem in the status quo is that when you're having a fluctuating economy, basically uh, corporations will have the incentive when they have a crisis for example they have the incentive to fire several workers now the workers that are going to first fire are the middle are these poor people ladies and gentlemen why because these poor people work in for example in lower paying jobs ladies and gentlemen not holding an important position in a certain corporation and that's the reason why these people are the first victim of certain emerging situation especially with regards to fluctuating economy and that's the reason why we think it's best for us but best for these 
rich people to always have liquid money to cater to all the change that they might get, ladies and gentlemen. And how to do so is that they need to save their money. They need to always have savings for these unpredictable circumstances. However, ladies and gentlemen, the difference in the status quo is that the money that you um, save in the government in the form of healthcare, for example, can only be used when the emerging situation is when you're sick, ladies and gentlemen. However, you're not always sick, ladies and gentlemen. Lady, we think that when you have money that you save in a form of cash, it can be drawn and used for any emergency circumstance at any time. Different with the money that you save and materialize in the form of healthcare, for example, you can only draw the money when you're sick, which is so much different. Because when you are in emerging circumstance, when you have lost your job, you need direct use of cash. You need money in order for you to pay for you know your rent, your your houses, or any other needs that might can that cannot be catered by the government in a blanket policy. And we think it's important, ladies and gentlemen. That's the reason why we often see poor people indebted very much. Why? For example, they have loans for, for their entrepreneurs, for example, or they have student loans for their education or in a higher degree that they invest in, ladies and gentlemen. All in all, we cannot generalize the need of the people. Some people would like to prefer to, you know, eat less and conserve their food in order for them to have money and they can use their money to save their money for their sons and daughters to go to college and help them break the vicious cycle of poverty, for example. And that's the reason why it's important for these people to have the money. All in all, we think the government cannot be expected to always generalize the needs of the people in the form of public services and that's the reason why we think on the first argument we show that actually the best way for us to help these people and meet their needs is by applying the proposal. Now going to the second argument, we say that policy is the best way to use taxpayers' money because basically government already have the budget in order to meet a uh, budget because they are paid by the taxpayers, right? And government promises that these money are given for the people and to distribute the wealth among the society. However, in status quo, we see basically this money cannot be properly allocated to the poor anyway. Why? Because basically all of this money can only be claimed when circumstantial basis arrives, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 thank you. Basically when the society is not sick, when people are not sick, they cannot claim the money that the government promised them to give, ladies and gentlemen. When government, when certain part of society choose not to pursue education, for example, they cannot claim the money that government promised them to give. No, thank you. And we think this is wrong. Because basically, first of all, poor people will not get the money they deserve if they choose not to comply with the standards of the government that might not necessarily follow the need of the society. But more importantly, if the financial term of a government has already passed, for example, this allocation of budget will be drawn to other sectors, ladies and gentlemen. For example, after a year passed after the financial planning have been uh, declared, ladies and gentlemen, these money that are not claimed by the society who are, who, are, who are sick will be used for military or for any other needs in other sector, which, which means that this money are taken further away from the poor people that it's supposed to serve. Under our proposal, it's going to change because our proposal ensures that every people that already pay the tax can claim the, the money that they deserve, which is basically the rightful way of a government. Because basically, government have the responsibility to ensure that any specific needs of society can also be catered. And the way to do that is not by applying a general and blanket policy in a way that hinders their capability to get money and alleviate their problem. What have we proven to you on the We have proven to you that. First of all, the status quo is completely not enough and unfair. We think the best way for us to do so is to allow people to have their money and use it for their dire and emerging needs. For all of this reason, we are very proud to open the case of proposition.
Ladies and gentlemen, I guess we can all agree that the debate today is about uh, fighting for the welfare of every one of citizens, right? But the question is, how are we going to ensure that by the end of the day, this citizen would actually get those type of welfares that we are trying to give them, right? And we believe that the side government today has failed in actually recognizing or actually, actually give us some kind of reassurance on how this money would actually be um, paid and transferred onto those um, healthcare services that we want these people to get. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I move on to my argument, let me um, present some points of rebuttals. First of all, on their very um, simple mechanism of simply giving people consultation and hoping that they would ultimately just know best right then and there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you first, how do you ensure that these people would even have the slightest interest to go into these consultations, right? And secondly, even if they do go, how are we to ensure that these lessons actually sink in, that they would here, probably here. ultimately, once they leave the class, would not um, misuse this money? So we believe that this is a very minuscule um, model by their side. Now moving on to their points of argument. First of all, they argue about unpredictability of how some people might get unemployed, right? And this is why we should give them money. Well, we say that first, when you're unemployed, you're given compensation. So you're going to be at least have any other source of money to actually um, sustain your life then. But then even further, we believe that in our proposal, what we're trying to give them, the status quo right now, if we give them healthcare services, education, food, and also even houses for them to stay in. And so we believe that this, by the end, would be more beneficial uh, and would yeah. be enough su to suffice. But on their second argument, on this is b by saying that this is the best way to ensure that every one of those taxpayers' money will be allocated directly to these people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that on this subject, health and education will always be needed. And yeah. so this money will, all, will always be um, allocated towards providing these services into, uh, into these people without necessarily giving them the money. And, and also on the second layer, we believe that they, yet I need to stress again that they have yet to actually address the kind of misuse that is possible, widely possible within their proposal. And so basically their arguments do not stand. Sure, continue, sir. No, thank you. Now moving on to my arguments, I would like to prove to you about three things. First of all, on what is actually the government should give to its citizen. And secondly, why is the government, why is the government is the most capable in defining how are they supposed to give it. Here. And lastly, the kind of harms that would basically be um, present with their um, current proposal. Yeah. Now moving on to my argument, right, on why should and uh, what exactly should the government give its citizen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let us identify the role of the state. Basically, simply put, the role of the state is to give wealth to the society, to maintain and assure their basic rights is being fulfilled and they can sustain their life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the best way is to actually sticking with the status quo right now, which has been actually proven in Scandinavian countries on why yeah. they have such a very good level of welfare, welfare and people there are basically so fulfilled. We believe that the reason why they provide welfare services instead of direct money is because money is, li is, is easily liquid. Now yeah. this goes actually directly onto their points. We believe that it is because that money is liquid that it is so easy for people to lose their money. Yeah. Now let us contextualize on what kind of people that we're actually giving this money to. We're talking about poor people, right? We're talking about people who are short-sighted and their lack of education. Not because the government are not, is not providing them with education, but simply probably because they have other priorities that they would want to fulfill first on their in, based on their individual wants. Now this is actually what is problematic. How are we supposed to ensure that they would have a better priority if, if, if in the start they wouldn't even they, they don't even see education to uh, to be some sort of a first priority for them to pursue first other than um, other um, expenditures like they could be spending this money on gambling for example instead of paying it for their um, student uh, for their son's tuition or probably even superficial expenditure like buying new clothes and all those um, other stuff and yes the government may Pr uh, propose of some kind of supervision but ladies and gentlemen we believe that in our proposal by giving them direct services it is already a form of automatic supervision yeah, yeah. because these people would not then be left with any chance to misuse those money yeah. now moving on to my second argument no thank you on why government can decide what to give its citizen 
Well, first of all, we believe that government is an independent entity. Ladies and gentlemen, these grassroots people that we're trying to give the money to, they are bounded by all the pressures from society, maybe from their family or from their um, friends, for example. Like their wife could ask them, ask the husband to buy her new clothes, or their son could ask them to buy new toys, right? And so these people, this person in charge of the money, might go to the extent where, they, where he would actually consider fulfilling those first. But government is basically someone who is independent of this type of external disturbance. And so we believe that the government knows best in actually, um, in actually strategizing on how we are we going to give the services directly to the people. And secondly, we believe that the government also has the best info, information to make a better projection. Ladies and gentlemen, let us consider on why so many governments in the world today champions education. Probably to a very local people, poor people, they, education probably on the bottom of their list. But the government somehow strives to fight to ensure their people that education should come first. We believe that this comes from the Sir. extra wisdom that the government yeah, possess yeah. in actually projecting what would be best for the general interest of the society. And we believe that by fulfilling this, by allowing government to, fo to go down this road and do as they wish based on their um, wisdom on what's best for the society, we believe that by the end these people would be also the ones who are um, benefited by this proposal. Now moving on on my um, last substantive on how this would actually harm the current um, country. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that ultimately what would be so harmful when we go forward with this proposal is that this type of um, services such as health, education, food, by the end of the day would be less accessible towards these people. Well, because simply what they're championing, what they're proposing is that we would retract all the services that we have been providing them and exchange that for a certain amount of money so then we could give them this money directly to the poor people, right? But then we, they have yet to guarantee it how, well, if these people would actually pay those kind of money to go back um, to those kind of services that the government wish these people to have. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the government um, requires education and health be for a reason. Education provides people with a better um, long-term benefit. They would be more equipped to um, deal with future um, competitions and health increases their productivity. Now, should these two elements be missing from the society or be less improved, we believe that the harm would be more evident in the country and towards all the sectors because now the country would have less capable human resources, for example, and this country would be less competitive. And so if the, once the growth of the country is harmed, by the end of the day, we would also see that this could also harm the people. And we believe that ultimately this would only backlash the very main goal of the motion to begin with. And so we are very proud to oppose. Thank you. I will actually respond, respond to the cases that they brought. The only claim that has been brought by the leader of opposition is about how when, pe when this, this kind of poor people is actually irresponsible. They do not know how to use this kind of money and so forth and so on. We think it is no, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because this kind of poor, poor, poor people is actually want to live from their poverty, right? They would like to actually go and be like wealthy people. Now the idea is that they have been um, feeling how it is to actually to be poor, so far and so on. We think that 
in terms of responsibility, government is always being responsible to, to actually help these kind of people. We are only talking the way to how to teach these kind of people to actually be responsible. Is it actually in the status quo, which is only they can claim it, or we, we just are in our proposal, which can we can give it first. Now, compared to this kind of model, when we can kind of giving this kind of money first towards, uh, towards this kind of people, they will actually be responsible, right? Why? Because they, when they knew, they accept this wicked money at the very first place. When they are run out of the money, they, they knew that the government will not actually help them to actually provide them, provide them like for example, the help and so forth and so on. So we think in our, in our model, we, we as the government is actually being responsible in terms of like still uh, distributing money towards them, but but we actually, in our idea, we also champion the idea about how we teach to be to these people to actually be responsible because you because you you are given certain amount of money and it would not lead them to a dependency towards the government because it it would not create them a, a more safety net because when you are in the safety net you will not uh, actually can lead the poverty because of what because you know even if you are poor you can still actually get access towards like uh, government facilities which is in our proposals they will be more responsible because they knew these kind of cases and they they can lead to a uh, to a more poverty. So we think that the idea of them, how to actually people being irres irresponsible is actually has fall. Now to the second thing, we believe that yes, we as the government is also agree that governments is actually can decide what kind of things to actually give towards the society. Now we think that the, they, my prime minister already explained to you what is like in the current status quo. What is like in the current status quo is that they already taken away certain amount of money from taxpayer that they say they would like to allocate them to the poor people. Yes, we think in the status quo in our, our in our proposal they still allocate, but we think in the current status quo they this kind of poor people only able to get this kind of money when they play it, which is we already explained to you that in our proposal not all, all people are in actually in the same le level of welfare. There are differentiation of level. So we think when the, there are certain people who not claim it, the distribution of money that is coming from taxpayer is not being able to achieve by this kind of poor people. So that's why we think that uh, this kind of people, there are a lot of poor people that might not get this kind of thing, uh, this kind of facilities that they are playing to champion in this kind of thing. Uh, that's why we think that the only best way, best way, best way to for them is to actually get uh, this kind of liquid money. Now we are moving on to my extension. Okay. Okay. Why do you think that these poor people is going to be responsible? If you said that they are going to use to the health, it means that you agree with the status quo because we provide health for them. Yes, but we think that in the current status in our proposal, it will teach them how to be responsible when they are claiming so for, uh, for the money. And it can probably, uh, they, and they, they can manage the money to proliferate. Now, uh, now moving on to my extension, it's about, uh, first I would like to talk to you about the idea of the time value of money, and the second thing is about how it is in light from, from the government effort to teach entrepreneurship for poor people. Now, uh, when we are talking about the time value of money, we think that the idea, for example, the one million peso you get right now is slightly different from the step which you get uh, from the idea of money like you get uh, 10 years from now, which is in the same amount of one million, right? One million, right? That's exactly, exactly how this kind of proposal is actually working. We think that when these kind of people get, for example, one million peso right now, they can put it in a bank. When they put it in a bank, they get like, for example, of uh, uh, they money can be fully free and then it, it, it can grow up to a more bigger money towards this kind of people. What we think in the current status quo, when we only, uh, when the government is the only one who serves this money, they never actually manage to give like the proliferation of money to actually to the poor people, right? We think that this this what we would like to champion in the idea of how this kind of people will actually uh, can create a proliferation of money. And when we, this kind of proliferation of money is actually happen, this kind of people will be more healthy and so forth and so on. And that's why we think that the best way for them to actually uh, get this kind of thing is by giving them a liquid money. Now, moving on to my second extension, it's about how it is actually in line with the government effort to teach entrepreneurship to act to poor people. We think that in the United States or in every country, the the government is actually uh, teaching people how to be an entrepreneurship, how they can manage to live 
to from the poor the poverty itself. Now, why this kind of people, this kind of poor people, cannot be enter entrepreneurship and so forth and so on? Because they do not have money. When they do not have money, when they go to the bank and ask for a loan, the the, the bank would not be uh, trust them right because they do not have money like for. Um, trust that the, this kind of bank can actually give towards them. Now when this, they, these people is actually having a money that is coming from the welfare service, they can get a trust from this kind of bank and then they can proliferate this kind of money to actually a more better man. So we think that it is in line uh, right, with the idea of the government how they would like to actually teach entrepreneurship towards this kind of people. Because we think in the current status quo, when you want to like to ask like, okay, you should be an entrepreneurship, but without giving them any capital to actually begin with, how do they? How do you manage to be able to tell them that you should be an entrepreneurship? You should leave your poverty and so forth and so on when you do not give them any accessible uh, rights to actually get this kind of thing. So based on those those things, we think that we already championed the idea about how these kind of people will actually be responsible without leaving the government responsibility, and how that we believe that it will champion the idea of uh, people being wealthy and so forth and so on. So based on that, we make you propose. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I will mainly deal with the further impact of these policies on how this will finally create social gaps between the rich and the poor even bigger. And secondly, I'm going to talk about the resentment that will lead to a, a worse policy in the future. But before that, I'm going to have four points of rebuttals to the side proposition. Firstly, they believe that the government cannot generalize all people's needs, right? And they, need, and they believe that this policy caters that. But firstly, we believe that if that, if, uh, we believe that the interest of every single individuals inside these countries, especially the poor people, is not necessarily true, right? I think the first speaker, my first speaker, have actually explained to you on how usually the the poor peoples are derived and are pressurized by the conditions of economy, and they have too much imaginations, and do not, and they do not actually think in the further extent, and they cannot project what is actually going to happen in the future, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, we believe that the government is the rightest actor and the most holistic actor that can actually decide best what is actually the the most important thing for that particular society, ladies and gentlemen. Because discussions happen in the government, smart people, can, uh, smart people, and also more uh, and more representations from society happens and discusses things in the government, ladies and gentlemen. And by that, we are going to have more holistic view and more fair view in in the end, right? But secondly, ladies and gentlemen. If the interest of that particular society leads to something actually bad, ladies and gentlemen, we the government always has the obligation and has to actually prevent these bad things from happening, ladies and gentlemen. That is why, for example, you put syntax on the alcohol to ensure that people who are actually using alcohol and drinking alcohol are the, are the rightest people and they know there is consequences of that actions, right? But thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, we think that ensuring the needs of, part of, of every society has to actually be allocated to the rightest one, ladies and gentlemen. You have to allocate that you have to allocate that in the in the rightest method and our side is, is the one that can prove that ladies and gentlemen why 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 is that so because poor people ladies and gentlemen we can never ensure that these poor people are going to use this money for educations or for healthcare or for food ladies and gentlemen and and, and because there's possibility ladies and gentlemen you can always intervene to that particular society to ensure that the, 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 the uh, to ensure that these monies are, are are allocating very well right they might say ladies and gentlemen that people might not claim that uh, might not claim education in our status quo, for example. People might not claim healthcare, for example, in our status quo, ladies and gentlemen. But our status quo is much better because when they do not 
claim their, their education, their health care, at least they do not waste the taxpayers' money, ladies and gentlemen. Because the money are not going to are not going to be given to them, right? Because they are not actually gaining benefits from that from that education and from healthcare. But under their purposes, ladies and gentlemen, this money might be used for gambling or other other unimportant stuff of these actually poor people, right? But secondly, the second speaker talked about, no thank you, the second speaker talked about dependency, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that their proposals, uh, uh, dependency happens in both sides, right? But we are, but, uh, and we believe that this should not be the case. The second speaker's uh, uh, point of dependency does not work. But thirdly, they believe that money can become something, ladies and gentlemen, in the future, on how people are going to save this money at the very end. Firstly, they never, they, they, they can actually never ensure that these poor people are going to invest this money in the bank, for example. And how, they, and given their characterizations, and they never characterize on how poor people are going to have incentive to go to bank and save the money anyway. Sorry. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, in the status quo, of course, these poor people will still have money, right? They still, they still have jobs, for example, they still have works, ladies and gentlemen, and their, their main reasons of giving this policy is only for reasons, for uh, only for lessons, for example, for these poor people to, uh, to, to actually learn. Then if this is only for lesson, ladies and gentlemen, why are you giving that, part, that that huge amount of money in the end, right? We believe that it is actually uh, it is actually wasteful and redundant. But lastly, they talk about loan, ladies and gentlemen, on how uh, these poor people might get loan at the very end, right? But firstly, we don't think that if you are actually going to bank and asking for loans, money is the only cap only only parameter when you are actually giving given that loan or not. Sometimes your level of educations, your certificates in a particular universities also determines what you can actually uh, what, how how much they can gain from that uh, from, uh, from the loan itself. Yes. In your proposal, these people will never save their money because they think that all of their needs already care about the government and closing any possibility for them to save their money in the future. Well, they have jobs and they can save the money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about the further impact, right? I'm going to talk firstly about the social gap and secondly about resentment. Now, moving to my first point, but how we believe that social gap will actually be, uh, be there in the end, right? We believe that social gap are going to be there because the rich people and the poor people are not going to have the equal chance to taste education, for example, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because when you are actually giving these policies to these poor people, for example, you are disincentivizing these poor people to go for education. Why is that so? Because firstly, the poor people do not have that long projections on how their life is going to be. They are they, they put the, the, the level of education in the lower priority <laughs> compared to toys, for example, compared to other other unimportant stuff or their houses, for example, ladies and gentlemen. We believe these policies. We, we believe, ladies and gentlemen. Most of, most of the people that are going to schools and, and, test the, and test and experience the educations are people who are actually aware of the effect of educations and understand the functions and, uh, and mostly who, uh, uh, the functions of educations at the very first place, ladies and gentlemen. Because, because of why? Because poor people, ladies and gentlemen, they cannot actually taste the direct impact and direct effect of education. So they tend to actually to actually deprioritize education at the very first place, ladies and gentlemen. Why this is very harmful? Because in the future, we believe that people who are already rich and already understand the functions and the effect of education are going to get richer at the end, end. And people who do not and, and poor people currently, ladies and gentlemen, who do not actually really care of that education and who don't really understand about the meaning of education are not going to schools and are going to have less chance in the future to taste a better job, ladies and gentlemen. And this is all this against the whole idea of decreasing the social gap of the government, right? But secondly, we believe this will create resentment for, for, from, the, from the rich people to the poor people at the very end. Because in developed countries, ladies and gentlemen, in a place we are using the progressive, progressive tax systems, or even more, you sometimes tax the richest 1% in, in Scandinavian countries by 40%, for example. You, uh, we believe that these rich people, ladies and gentlemen, has contributed a lot to the society and has actually given so much for uh, for uh, for these poor people, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the amount of the money that you are going to take from these people, rich people, ladies and gentlemen, are sometimes very disproportionate, and you have to be able to allocate this money to the rightest one, right? Now we believe that by these policies, you can never ensure that these poor people are going to use this money and utilize this money, ladies and gentlemen, in the rightest way, and this will make the poor people, uh, the rich people. Uh, Feel, feel unfair because because now the amount of the money they have been taken from them, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be used uh, are going to be used by these people to something that is actually be to, to something that is very irresponsible for for example, ladies and gentlemen. In the long run, will this will finally create resentment from the rich people to the poor to, to the poor people at the very first place, and we think this is just bad because you are going to because you you are going uh, you are going to have more discriminatory for these poor people at the very end, ladies and gentlemen. For that very reason, we are very proud to oppose the motion. Thank you very much. <coughs>
Before we go to the mental fashion in this video, I would love to have any differences between our model and the opening model, right? So, the opponent claim that the our model might be the same with the current status quo. We say no, ladies and gentlemen. Why so? Because in the current status quo, if you can't claim, if you don't claim the health coupon simply because you are not safe, it means that the money will be allocated to other sectors, right? Especially when the financial term of the budget has elapsed, right? So we think that this kind of mandate of taxpayers to the government to use this money, especially for the poor people, to distribution of the welfare will not be achieved under their proposal, right? Meanwhile, in our proposal, we ensure to you that at least the whole budget <coughs> in the national budget that has come from this poor, from this wealthy people to the government will be used to the these poor people and these poor people will use it by themselves, right? Now, now go to the main contention in this debate, right? There are two main contentions. First of all, whether this is the best method to alleviate the poverty, and second, whether it's the right thing to do with the taxpayers' money. Now, going to the first clash in this debate, whether this is the best method to alleviate the poverty, right? The only claim coming from negatives of the house is by saying that liquid cash is easily misused by the poor people, right? Now, several responses towards this statement. First of all, we think that's so much discriminatory statement, right? By simply saying that poor people are always stupid and the, the, the clever ones are always sitting in a parliament. That's why the, those parliaments have the right to decide whether this kind of money will be used wisely or not. We say that this kind of idea never get the solid justification why this kind of um, people will, uh, you know, this kind of parliamentary will use and even will allocate the budget wisely too, right? Because we say that the representatives even in the parliament also don't experience or don't get the direct exposure towards the poverty itself. So how could you also answer uh, that this kind of representative will even make the wise uh, decision towards the allocation of the budget itself, right? Now going to the second response towards this statement, right? We also say that we also would like to provide the consultation, right? And of course, if they only ask about the feasibility and the technical about how you, you know, comply this kind of consultation, we simply we can just make this compulsory and free requirement for these people before they get in the money, right? This is something trivial and not something to be put in the debate since the first place, right? No. Be moreover, we say that when they claim um, this kind of people have a tendency to do gambling and so forth and so on, we say this is not the debate, right? We say that if these poor people have a high tendency to do gambling, we simply can put another debate to, for example, um, restrict those poor people to go to casino, right? Or simply like, you know, put their syntaxes like they said, right? Those kind of things also has deterred those people to go to the gambling and can minimize the possibility of the misuse of the money, right? But moreover, the more important focus on this debate is about under our status quo that this proposal provides their proposal only provides basic education that they only champion, right? It means that this basic education only covers to the elementary or, for example, like secondary schools, right? But our proposal will even ensure these people to save the money to go to the tertiary education, right? Because under their proposal, the money, for example, that has been given by the government for this kind of elementary or secondary school will not make these people even have the um, have the rest of the money to put in the bank and also to go to the tertiary education simply because they are too dependent to the government and this they, because they, the parent salary are too low, they cannot have any savings to go to the tertiary education, right? No, exactly the same, we think that this is so much harmful. Now let's see how about they put the example of Scandinavian countries, right? We think that Scandinavian country is not that flawless, right? Especially when we talk about European countries, right? We especially when we see that, for example, in the crisis in the Scandinavian and European Union, so many people are now going to riot. Why so? Because those people are simply too dependent to the government's welfare services, right? Those people are not used to have 
um, you know, manage their finance, uh, financial issue by themselves because they simply that money they would can go to the government, receive, receive this kind of money, and you cannot, this can, uh, they cannot, um, they cannot manage their own money. That's very reason once the government do certain austerity and curtail certain basic services budget, they will go cry and simply because they are not used to. We don't want these people will become so much dependent. So that's why as a good government we want to teach these people to become independent, right? By using their money. So it means that our model will also provide you in the middle ground, right? First, government doesn't doesn't you know doesn't still responsible to these people and second of all the government also still make sure these people can manage their money it, it can manage uh, the money itself now go to the second responses towards under this contention right when they say that people will go recklessly we think that even if that happens this kind of reckless people will always happen under their proposal right because like in the current status quo even those people will not have any intention to save the money in the bank not to mention they have less money and second of all they simply think that they have the safety net coming from the government so as long as they can spend the money or the salary they can always go to the safety net to the government right so we think that um, poor people in our model we always have long term projection the only claim coming from negative side of the house by saying that you know poor people does not have long term projection without explaining why we say poor people doesn't have long term projection simply because they don't have the money to put as a long term projection Marysim. our model provides this thing before 6 minutes Because if these people do not claim, for example, as even though it is allocated to four, okay, I'm going exactly engage to our second class, right? Where there is the right thing to do with the taxpayers' money, right? They say this kind of model will only waste the taxpayers' money. We say no, ladies and gentlemen, because government annually has always set certain budget, right? Which one is for salary services? Which one is for military services? And specifically about this welfare services are the participation of the taxpayers' mandate to the government. To make sure the distribution of welfare is well received by the poor people, regime. The problem under your model is that this kind of money, the pool of money, will not be ensured to be put by those poor people, right? Simply because probably when they are not sick, they will not go to the hospital and ask for the um, healthcare coupon, right? So we think that under their model, we say that it will not, it's not a manifestation of wasting of taxpayers' money. It's that as a good government, they need to comply to make sure that this money that has been trusted by the taxpayers will be used finally by the, gov by the government to ensure the welfare of these uh, poor people, to make, to make sure these poor people will not create any kind of um, social disturbance towards the rich people itself, amen. So because we say that the current status quo right now, even though the government has created a certain basic services to those people, those people are open in depth. That is exactly the point my Prime Minister, right? So we say that this current proposal never enough for those poor people because those poor, the fact that poor people are still in depth heavily to other kind of lender. So it proves to you this kind of basicness cannot cover the unpredictability expenses coming from these poor people. So as the government of the house, we have proved to you that this is our best method and also just right to defend and alleviate the poverty. Mr. Madam Speaker, a very important clarification. We are very confused why our, our government is, is actually asking how about if this, this, um, this benefit is not going to be accessed by the society. We think that that's still fine, Mr. Madam Speaker, because at, at least this money can be used for something and can be utilized as it's supposed to be. Compared to their own proposal that they never ever guarantee that this money can be at the end of the day used for the sake of making welfare for the society, Mr. Madam Speaker. Secondly, they also claim that we are, we, are, we, are, we are discriminatory. No, 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 Mr. Speaker, we are not discriminatory. Because we think that our policy ensures the similarity that we provide uh, rich people with education and health, poor people also with education and health, Mr. Speaker. We, do, uh, we think that the moment that the, the, the poor people at the end of the day cannot
cannot access this. It means that we are discriminatory because at, at the end of the day they cannot access the same benefit as the rich. But we think that we are very confused when they are actually asking also about the dependency because dependency happen in both sides of the house and we don't think this should be supposed to be the debate. Okay, let's move to, towards the point of classes. First, what the, which policy is going to serve the society better? Second, about the, the point of the practical implication. Okay, talking to about the first idea, which one going to serve the society better? Okay, they are saying that liquidity is very important for you to face uncertainty. But they fail to engage But what happens on the status quo already enough to prevent the problem of uncertainty. The example that, that, that brought by RFDR is only unemployment, Mr. Speaker, which we think under the status quo has already been given by the compensation. But further on, let's analyze more what types of, uh, what types of uh, possibility that, um, that, that urgent thing happens. For example, poor people are very, are, are very, very prone to get sick because maybe, for example, they, they don't eat on the, uh, properly, Mr. Speaker. We provide you, we, we provide you with the healthcare, which the moment you actually get the uh, diarrhea and the next day you, 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 can, you can go to the, to the hospital and get the better man. Okay, for example, maybe um, how about if, if, if these poor people are actually um, uh, finding their uh, finding, finding um, the food and they fail to get so? Our policy provide them direct food. They, they don't need to find any other else from speakers. What I'm trying to say is that at the end of the day, our status quo ha has already given capability for these poor people to cope even with the with the with the probability they 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 need certain money from speakers. But further on, let's go towards the towards the towards the main chunk of the debate, which is whether or not liquidity is actually good from speakers. Because they are saying that liquidity is very because oh, some poor people are going to be entrepreneurs, they are going to save the money on the bank. Okay, the biggest question here is that what types of safety mechanism that you are actually going to do? They say consultation. We think that okay, maybe maybe consultation can be the primary mission for you to gain the money. But consultation only happen on that spot, and you can never know what's actually done by these poor people later on, Mr. Speakers. It's very, it's very difficult to really track down in every single second what activities that's actually done by these poor people. Whether they're actually uh, using a lot of their welfare payment just to buy chocolate for, for the sake of for, for the sake of very, very sudden happiness, Mr. Speakers, or they're actually doing gambling inside their neighbors, which can never be detected by the government. We don't think we don't see any response on this. So yeah. compared to the supervisions, no, thank you. That's going to happen under the policy of opposition. But it's going to be better. Why? Because we are going to ensure that these people will use this properly. Because, because the policy that happens under the status quo right now is that when you are going to have help, you just show your card towards the, towards the hospital and you can get uh, the, the benefit of the speakers. Our policy ensures that the money that's actually, that's actually allocated by the taxpayers for the sake of social welfare is actually used by the society as proper as possible, Mr. Honor Speakers. You just show this towards, towards the university and these people will, uh, will, will get educa education or even in high school, Mr. Honor Speakers. But even if Okay, let's say that under their, they, they, they are saying that not all, peop, not all poor people are going to be reckless to do so. We can see it, but let's compare the probability in some speakers. Under their policy, the probability of poor people of using this money um, improperly is, is actually much more bigger compared to ours. Why? Because we think that poor people, we are, we, are, we, are sorry, we are very sorry to say this, but they're actually living in a not conducive situation when they're actually forced by the environment to spend, as, spend their money as fast as possible in some speakers. Because for, for these poor people, the benefit of health and, and, um, and, and education is not that direct in some speakers. Sorry. They might think that eating is actually the, the best thing to do. So, which we think, uh, we, we, which we think that at the end of the day, this, this is actually not that, in, uh, not that important, Mr. Speakers, because government knows better. But more, but, but, but more importantly, we think that, uh, we think that in the status quo right now, government can even ban something, although it's actually on the base, on the probability. For example, government banned research that proves that climate change is actually not man-made. Because government is afraid. The moment this research is actually proven true, people is actually going to oppose the environmental movement, Mr. Honorable Speakers. But secondly, on the, on, on the issue, that they, they, they are saying that people is actually the, the actor that knows the best, what, um, what was actually the best for them. We have several responses on this. Firstly, we think society is not the, the, the best actor to do so. Why? Because we think that society is actually don't have enough information. Let's take a look at what types of society that we, that we are actually talking. These are, these are the society that's actually living under the condition when their grandparents, their, their fathers are actually not accessing education. When, when, when they think that education is not important for them, Mr. Honor Speakers, they are actually trapped in, in, in this particular condition. But compared to what's actually, what's actually the thought of the government, government is actually having a much better projection future, Mr. Honor Speakers. That's why government thinks that education, uh, I will take you in a second, 
That's why government think that education and health is very important because government thinks that just just only because education and health, these poor people can fight against the the rich people at the end of the day, Mr. Madam Speaker. Okay, before I go. In your model, even poor people can choose not to go to school anyway, so we don't necessarily think that the benefit of education is exclusive to your design school. On your benefit, is all, they, they they can also to reject, but we think that at least if they choose, the benefit is going to be direct for this uh, for these poor people, Mr. Madam Speaker. But more more, more importantly, we think that you have to be very very careful to use the taxpayers money because you're actually using the, the mandate of the society and you have to make sure this is that this is going to be used as effective as possible Mr. Ram speakers because the moment you cannot ensure the accountability of where the money goes on there will be a hatred from the society of, of from the taxpayers money and they'll be more reluctant to join um, the movements against the poor Mr. Ram speakers but let's talk, talk on the second idea about the practical implications they're saying that it's better to, to get the lesson for, for, for using money we have several responses on this first you just can teach them by giving a basic accounting uh, basic accounting lesson and stuff. But second, we don't think that you're actually giving lessons because these poor people are actually using the, 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 the state's money, not their own money. So the tendency of them to, 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 to do misuse is actually still that big because they don't feel the direct impact of losing that money on the very first place. But thirdly, even if even if you're going to provide, educa uh, provide education and experience for them, we think it's, it's not that important because you're going to sacrifice the taxpayers' money that can be built for another greater good that actually has been championed by opposition. What types of greater good that we are actually talking? Education. Some speakers. They are saying that oh, under under our policy, we cannot access the tertiary education. But we think that although we can access the tertiary education, at least we can we can reach the basic education, Mr. 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 Speakers. Because under the policy of the government, they cannot even ensure that people can even get the basic education at the end of the day. Because they they, they can can never ensure that these poor people will opt to uh, to use their money for the uh, for, for for using that. And we think that this is going to be more problematic because you are going to create social gap and making these poor people be um, um, more and more difficult to fight against the rich people, Mr. Speakers. That's why it's, it's much better to portray that health and education is actually more important. That's why we are very proud to oppose. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the first very consistent, consistent issue from the first speaker to the third speakers about the idea of not claiming. On how in our proposals they say that people might not, uh, there is possibility of poor people not claiming about this, uh, of these policies, right? Because the idea of not claiming can happen in both sides of the house. Because under their proposals, some people also might not claim the money. But in our side of the house, it is going to be better because at least. The money that you do not claim, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be allocated, for example, like they say, for war or for other policies. At least the, there is actually certain functions of this not, of this not claim money, ladies and gentlemen. But in your status, but in your proposals, you are going to you are going to put this money in a probability of that money getting wasted. So we believe that the idea of not claiming is not actually that uh, is not actually that important anyway. Now I'm going to talk to you about two clashes that happen throughout this debate, right? Firstly, I'm going to talk about the idea of accountability on how on how taxpayers' money should be allocated to everyone and which one is actually better. But secondly, on the idea of further harm, something that I have never responded from the very first beginning, right? Firstly, let's talk about the idea of accountability, ladies and gentlemen. Because that side of the house believes that uh, because the proposition believes that this is more accountable because sometimes people are, you know, have some kind of unpredictability and they need to cope with that. But firstly, we have actually answered this idea on how the, on how the effect of this of our policy is actually going to be there. Because education can always be there. And they, they brought examples about corporations living in their particular countries. We think that there are these safety mechanisms on how corporations are going to give compensation for and unemployment benefits towards these people, right? We think that there is already there. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, we think that we have actually given you a full characterization on how poor people, ladies and gentlemen, are, tend, uh, are going to uh, 
have a, have a huge tendency to become very uh, un unaccountable. Why is that so? Because sometimes the public benefits that we are going to give to them, ladies and gentlemen, are not going to give them a direct effect. For example, education can only be felt with the benefits after five to ten years, for example. And these two people, ladies and gentlemen, have a very short projections. And we believe this is, uh, this is very dangerous. And at that time, when we believe that there is actually a tendency to be very dangerous, ladies and gentlemen, the government can come and intervene towards these people, ladies and gentlemen. But you, and we believe, and we believe that our side provides you that, ladies and gentlemen. Because, because we believe that we are going to ensure that, this, that, that their self-projections are not going to harm their, their own self, right? But secondly, we also believe in the idea of insurance, ladies and gentlemen. When there is a certain possibility and probability that this money of taxpayers are going to be, are going to be uh, are, are going to be wasted, ladies and gentlemen. The government has to be responsible of that particular money, and the, and the moment that possibility exists, the government has to close the possibilities by our side of the house, ladies and gentlemen. And we believe, and on the idea of accountability, uh, the side of opposition takes it the faith. But secondly, on the idea of further harms, ladies and gentlemen, because they have not actually given a further harms, uh, a further harms of our policies. They just say on how this policy is going to be better because now the money can be used for entrepreneur, for example, or the money can be saved in the banks. We don't give any specific characterizations and specific reasons why actually poor people are going to go, go to the bank and save the money anyway, ladies and gentlemen. In our status quo, for example, we believe that this people will, uh, even if so, ladies and gentlemen, in our status quo, we believe that we can also do that anyway because the poor people can also have money to work in, for example. But we have brought you a, a, a certain arguments, for example, on the idea of social caps, or how the, the, the poor people are going to have less incentive to go for education, and finally create the gap between the rich and the poor people at the very first place. And secondly, about the resentment, ladies and gentlemen, that yeah. might occur, because the, because now the rich people are going to feel unfair, because because they have been taxed by 40% in Scandinavia, because they have been taxed by progressive taxation system, but their money, ladies and gentlemen, are not being allocated efficiently. For that very reason, ladies and gentlemen, people of the second class also go to the side of positions. And, uh, and based on these two clashes, ladies and gentlemen, we believe and we are very proud the opposition should take the faith. Thank you very much. We thought we had been very clear and straightforward in Prime Minister. That the characterization of these people is that when these people are left independent, when we allow these people to have their own money, when the government say to these people that this is the amount of the money that you will get for the whole month, these people will have the natural instinct to survive. These people have the natural capability to judge on what kind of things they need to spend in order for them to sustain their life for a month, ladies and gentlemen. That is the characterization on proposition was never contended to by opposition in this debate. In order for any side of the house to win this debate, they need to prove three things. First of all, that this policy or the status quo will better meet the needs of the citizens. Second, that the citizens have or have not the capacity to determine their needs and lastly whether or not the policy will create betterment for them in the future so to the first point whether or not this uh, the, uh, this will meet the basic need of the people now first of all team opposition say that this proposal is taking away the basic needs of people we're taking away their food we're taking away their health care now we don't necessarily say so ladies and gentlemen because we're not taking away all of their you know food or all of their you know um facilities ladies and gentlemen what we say is that these people can buy these things very the money that government gives. However, ladies and gentlemen, should they think that they don't have to eat as much as the government provides them, they can use that excessive money for other needs that they seem important, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot generalize that every form of citizens' need is always the same thing. That every time they meet crisis, the money come from compensation of companies will always be enough. You cannot generalize that need, ladies and gentlemen. The exact reason why we have lots of people indebted to loans, indebted to, you know, um, um, loans in banks or to other person is because there are lots of needs that the government cannot foresee. And for that reason, we think that these 
these people in status quo have, cannot have their needs being catered by the policy. And our proposal changed that because we give them the liquid money to respond to dire need, to respond to emerging situations. And as such, we think our proposal creates betterment of fulfilling society's needs. Now, on the second question, whether or not society will be rational. Now, team opposition says that ra these poor people will always do gambling, will always buy toys, will always buy clothes, and we don't think so. First of all, that is the characterization of a rich people. But second of all, we also believe that these people, uh, when you already give them the capacity to use their own money, for example, we think that these people will have the natural instinct to survive, the natural instinct to actually use their money in order for them to, you know, survive for the longest time possible. The nature of human, with the amount of the least amount of money, they want to survive as long as possible. And that's the reason why we in proposition, especially on second proposition, have clearly explained to you on how these people will have the capacity to be rational in determining what they need and what they don't, ladies and gentlemen. However, in their policy, it's never going to be achieved. Because even if they do have capacity to project the future, they don't have the money to, realize, to materialize all of that projection. And as such, we think it's better for us to go with proposition because we create that rationality and capability to project in the long term. Now, on the third point, we also, uh, in whether or not it creates better for the future. Now, proposition says, the opposition says that we need to put them in education because that's the only way for us to achieve betterment. Now, we on opposition, uh, we on proposition believe that it's not necessarily being achieved in their policy because basically we never oblige people to go to schools anyway, right? However, in our proposal, if these people not choose not to go to education, they can use that money for other things. For example, they can, you know, pay their rents, for example, or pay their debts, for example, or do entrepreneurship or other forms of need that they think might be important, uh, more important, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot generalize that uh, the way to achieve betterment or the way to achieve richness is only through education. Because, you know, people in the parliament might not always feel the same uh, problem that these people have. So all the problem regarding social gap on any other problem that have relation to education is not mutually exclusive to their policy ladies and gentlemen so as such we are very proud to say that you should vote for proposition